In the emergency department, eight-year-old Chris is waiting with his mum and dad. What's happened, fella? And my leg started hurting. Oh, dear. Let's find out more. It was a beautiful sunny day and Chris was in the playground playing tag. He was playing with bags. He was playing tag, Zand. Oh, right, flags. Zand, he was playing tag. Stags! Right, got it. But that does sound dangerous. No, Zand, he was with his friends playing tag. OK, keep your hair on. right up. Chris was playing tag. Yes! He was running really fast when all of a sudden his knee twinged with pain and he had to stop. Ouch! It hurts right there, under the knee cap. Well, Chris, we'd better get that leg seen pronto. Here's Dr Sarah Edwards to check out that painful pin. Anywhere else hurting at all? No. So it's just your knee? Yeah. Fantastic. Can you bend it for me? Kneezy does it, Doc. And can you straighten it for me? It pins. It hurts, and it's hurting just at the back here? Yeah. We'll get an X-ray of that knee area just to have a look, all right? Chris hops off to X-ray, where radiographer Catherine Barnett checks for breaks in that knee. Keep that one nice and straight. That's it. Done. Ah, oh, good old Dad's on hand to carry Chris. Thanks, Dad. What's the verdict, Doc? Looking at the X-ray, there's no obvious breaks or anything that we can see. It does look very swollen, that knee, though. As the joint is inflamed, Chris will have to take painkillers. High five. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, have you got any advice for when I next play tag, Chris? Be the careful and don't run that fast. Sounds good. See ya, fella. Bye. <laughs> Paramedics use state-of-the-art vehicles like this to respond to medical emergencies within minutes. And today, I'm going with them to see what it's like to be first on the scene. Yo. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. She can do 20 emergency call-outs in a day. And a new case has come through. So a call's just come in about an 83-year-old woman with one of her legs swollen. So we need to get there as quick as possible. Following a fall three days ago, Doreen's leg has swollen up and she's not been able to leave the house. Her daughter is concerned something serious could be wrong. Oh. We need to see if these, that knee needs draining. It's quite swollen, isn't it, in comparison to the other one? To have her leg properly looked at, she'll need to go to hospital. 5157, can I have Amber back up, please, Eva? So I'll arrange for an ambulance to come and pick you up. I'll do your blood Maybe pressure and... and everything. You look gorgeous, you. Doreen. Oh, God. You look gorgeous. Have you had any clots before? No. No. Not so no more. One of the main things I think might be going on is she might have a clot, which can happen in older people. And in her legs, that doesn't cause her too much problem, but it can be dangerous if it moves from the legs and goes to the lungs. With the ambulance on its way, we have time to do some important tests that will help the hospital when Doreen gets there. Doreen, this is a tracing of your heart, and you can see it's nice and regular. Glad some things right. All the lines are the right way up and the right height, and they look fine. This is Doreen. Had a fall on Saturday. Pain in her left knee with swelling. Left lower leg. The ambulance crew have arrived and Doreen's in great shape. She's really cheery, but she has got this knee pain. So we need to get her to hospital, fix the pain, and then she can come home again. We've got um, what's called a striker chair to get Doreen downstairs on. And it's a special design chair that has runners rather than wheels, so it can slide down the stairs. What do you think of this, Doreen? I've never seen one of these before. I might get one myself. <laughs> Doreen's an amazing woman, but today her leg's a bit swollen. She can't walk around as easily as normal, so she's going to get to hospital. And luckily, when she needed help, Jan and the amazing chair were here to give it. With hundreds of rapid response crews in the UK, if you have an accident, an emergency service like this won't be far away. Today, we're at a theme park to help you solve your medical mysteries. If you're anxious about an ailment... ..or curious about a condition... ..then the Alchmobile is the place for you. That's brilliant, look at that. Zand is preparing the clinic ready for his patients. And later, he'll be out in the park to answer your burning questions. At the clinic, he's open for business. Can I have the next patient? First in is eight-year-old Zoe, with a question about some bendy bits on her body. 
So, Zoe, why have you come to the Ouchmobile? So I've got a really bendy body. What's the diagnosis, Doc? This sounds like a case of I've got a really bendy body-itis. That's what I'd say. Can I have a look at what you can do? I can to bend my arm all the way around. Oh, well, I think I can do that. Oh, wait a minute. You're doing a thumbs up while I'm doing a thumbs down? <laughs> wow, that's amazing. What else can you do? Touch my elbows behind my back. OK, I can at least do this one. Are they touching? Are they no. close? No. Oh. Why do I bend so much and my friends don't? What you've got is a thing called hypermobility. Most of the time, your joints are held in place by things called ligaments, and they're like very tough elastic bands that keep the bones together. Now, those ligaments are mostly made of something called collagen, and in most people, the collagen is quite tough, but for you, it's a bit more flexible, it's a bit stretchier, and that means that your joints can move a little bit more. It doesn't do you any harm, though, but it does mean that you're a bit more bendy than other people. It's a busy day for Zand. He's leaving the clinic to go ouch and about in the park to solve your medical mysteries. Why do you get heat rash when it's hot? Ordinarily, what you're trying to do when you're hot is send all the blood to the surface of your skin, and then as your sweat evaporates, it cools that blood down. You get colder. But when you get a heat rash, all the blood going to your skin irritates it, and it gets itchy, and it gets red. So what you really need to do is cool down some other way, like cold water or a cold T-shirt, or just get in the shade. Why do you shiver after you've been on a wet ride? Shivering is your body's attempt to warm up, because you get all your muscles working. It's very hard work shivering. And it's a bit like going for a run without having to go for the run. You get all your muscles shaking, that generates heat and you feel a bit warmer. The best thing to do is dry off, though. Back at the Ouchmobile, there's a new case in the waiting room. Can I have the next patient? It's nine-year-old Beth <laughs> with a nuisance on her knee. So, Beth, what's brought you to the Ouchmobile today? I've got two things going on on my knee. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds like a case of I've got two things going on on my knee-itis. Two for the price of one. Oh, wow, that's interesting. What we can see there is you've clearly got a scab, and around it you can see the skin's raised, it's quite hard, it's dried out, it's rough. That's a condition called psoriasis. What's happening in psoriasis is the cells in your skin that make the tough outer layer of your skin, it's called keratin, they overgrow for some reason. They're more active, they're making more keratin. That's what making that bit of skin kind of rough and thick and hard. Why won't my psoriasis heal? It's been like that since I was around four or five. Sometimes it goes away over time, and sometimes it doesn't. So I'd say for the moment, the best you can do is leave it alone. If it doesn't go away or if it gets worse, then it's well worth going to see a doctor. There are drugs that they could use to treat it, but hopefully it'll, it'll die down of its own accord. Job done for today. Clinic closed. In the emergency department, the team are ready for their first patient. Let's meet her. In Liverpool accident and emergency, 13-year-old Alice has done something to her leg. I have a dislocated knee. Well, how do you know? So you can feel my whole knee, like, shift in the wrong direction. Weird. Well, how did that happen? It was break time at school. Alice was chilling with her mates. Oi, son, leave the snow controls alone. Sorry, we did say she was chilling. Righto. So, did she dislocate her knee running as fast as you can see? No. Did she jump in the air like she really didn't care? No. Was she swinging in the gym, balanced on one limb? Nope. And the right answer doesn't rhyme either. What was it then? She just turned and her kneecap popped out. Oh. Ouch! <laughs> I've dislocated my knee eight or nine times before. Eight or nine times? That's no <laughs> laughing matter. <laughs> On the case is Dr Anne Kerr. What we need to do today, I need to have a little look at it, it's going to hurt, obviously, so what we'll do is get the gas and air, then I'll try and have a look at your knee and see if we need to straighten it up ourselves. Gas and air is a mixture of nitrous oxide and oxygen. As you breathe it in, the gas numbs the pain receptors in your brain and it can also make you feel a bit funny. It's called laughing gas for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> the laughing gas has kicked in and the pain is numb, so the doc can get that kneecap back in place. So all we have to do really is gently straighten the knee whilst pushing the kneecap forwards into the middle of her knee. Because Alice has dislocated her kneecap so many times, she needs to come back to the hospital for a closer examination. 
time for another look at the problem leg. Doing that today is surgeon Nick Barton Hansen. He's examining Alice while she's asleep under anaesthetic, so she won't feel a thing. Well, the two main tests, the first to see if her kneecap slides over to the side, which it did a bit more than the other side, and the other one to see where the ligament's torn is. That seems to be quite wobbly. Your body is tied together to keep everything in place. Ligaments tie bones to bones, and tendons tie muscles to bones. If a ligament is damaged, it can make your body wobbly and unstable. So, what's the verdict? The reason she's been having so much trouble with that knee is because of the damage to her ligament. And that was caused by an old injury, and now her kneecap can move forward and back. So how can you help, Doc? What I'm going to do for her is to create a new ligament that can be done in one operation. Wow, amazing! We'll see how Alice gets on with that later in the show. Remember Alice and her dislocated knee? Well, let's head back to the accident and emergency department to see how she's getting on. In Liverpool, Alice is back for an operation on her dodgy knee. Oh, yes, I remember. She was just chilling. Oh, no, you don't. We haven't got time. This is just a recap. It was break time at school, and Alice was sitting on a table, swinging her leg. Then she turned, and her kneecap popped out. Ouch! So what is this op going to do? Hopefully it will make my life better. <laughs> and with that, Alice heads off down to theatre for an operation to rebuild her knee ligament using one of her own tendons. Now remember, your body is tied together to keep everything in place. Ligaments tie bones to bones and tendons tie muscles to bones. But Alice's ligament is damaged, making her knee wobbly and unstable. Still smiling, Alice is soon off to sleep and ready for knee fixer extraordinaire, Mr Nick Barton Hansen. It's lights, camera, action, as Nick's using a special camera to fix Alice's knee. The first thing he does is pull out two of Alice's tendons. These long, stringy things attach muscles to bones. So that's going to be the new ligament when it's put in. Before that, he needs to stretch them. This makes them less elastic and a bit stronger. Now he needs to get Alice's knee ready for her new ligament. A shaver and vaporizer gets rid of the old, damaged ligament and scar tissue. Next, a hole is drilled in the bone to hold the new ligament. Now the new ligament is prepped and ready to go into Alice's knee. That done, the whole thing's tightened up and locked in place with a plastic screw. That's more like it. It doesn't wobble around anymore or dislocate. Ain't Mr Hansen the man? Alice gets stitched up. And we're finished. Operation went very well. She's got a, a lot of hard work to do herself now. I think she'll do very well with it and she should be fine. Our patient is soon awake but it will take six weeks of physiotherapy to get her knee working again. Hopefully I can do sport now and football and I'll be yay! Great result! Bye, Bye Alice! Bye, Bye Bear! Bear. <laughs> We're on call with the UK Emergency Services, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. This is a rapid response vehicle, and it's on standby 24-7 to respond to whatever emergency calls coming in. Today, I'm going along for the ride, and guess what? You're coming with me. Jan can take 10 to 15 emergency call-outs in a day, and a new case is just in. So we've had a 999 call to a 53-year-old lady who's injured her ankle. So it could be anything from a simple sprain to blood loss, severe pain, and maybe some other cause for the fall that could be life-threatening as well. So we've got to get there quickly, find out what's going on. The call has taken us right into the centre of town. Hello. 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 Is it Linda? It is. What's what? happened? What? Tripped over the man now. Oh, up. just the edge of that raised platform yeah. there. So was you knocked unconscious at all? No. Have you hit your head or the back of your neck or your back at all? No. What have you injured? My knee and my ankle. OK. Are you able to bend your knee at all? I do, but my ankle hurts. Your ankle hurts when you bend it? OK. Yep. Press down on my hand. Push down as hard as you can. Where does that hurt when you push down? On my ankle. On the outside? Yeah. Linda's ankle is clearly causing her a lot of pain. 
So it may just look like Jan's feeling her ankle, but in fact, she's feeling it in very particular places. There's a set of rules called the Ottawa Ankle Rules, and they help you decide whether they're likely to have broken a bone. So Jan's trying to figure out which bits are tender. That'll tell us whether she needs to go to hospital. Yeah, I'm going to need Emma back up for this patient. She's unable to wait there, um, needs an x-ray. Using the Ottawa rules, Jan has decided that the ankle is probably broken and Linda does need an ambulance. The moment she's quite uncomfortable, we're managing to keep her warm, but she can't walk on that leg. So we need to get her to hospital and get her an x-ray. She can be treated from there. It's important to keep it still so that if she's got any bones that are broken, if the edges rub together, it can create a lot of pain and it can create some bleeding, which will make the ankle worse as well. You're doing it, that's it. Well done, darling. Are you able to twist around a little bit? There you go. It's really good that Jan was able to assess her really quickly, get her an ambulance and get her to hospital where she needs to be. And once there, the doctors discovered Linda's ankle was broken and it was soon fixed. Ouch. Away from the clinic, Chris is out and about in the park. Archer, what's your question? How do you get a wobbly tooth? Do you know that below all your baby teeth, you've got grown-up teeth already in your jaw, and they're growing through. And as they grow through, they push the baby teeth out, and that's why it gets wobbly. A really good question. Thank you, Archer. Thanks, Dr Chris. Back at the Ouchmobile are siblings 8-year-old Charlotte and 11-year-old James. So, Charlotte, James, why have you come to the Ouchmobile? When I stand up, I have a gap in between my knees and I can't put them together. But I can. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Oh, sounds to me like it's a case of I've got a gap between my knees when I stand up and I can't put them together, but I can itis. Easy for you to say. Well, let's find out more about this. Now, Charlotte, can you open the lid on the ouch cam? Now, stand up and show me your knees. Oh, wow. Your feet are close together. Mm -hmm. But as we move up, your knees are wide apart. Now, that is completely different to your brother whose knees are touching. How does this happen? The answer really is that we don't know. I can tell you what's happened is that your bones have grown slightly differently. So we call that a varus change in your knees. What you've really got is normal knees that are a bit, bit further apart than some other people's knees, and other people have got knees that knock together a little bit more. The way that your bones grow is controlled in quite a complicated way. And so you can just get a variation where for some people it grows slightly differently. So your brother's grown with his knees close together and you've grown differently. Now you're still growing and your leg bones are still growing. So possibly as Charlotte gets older, the gap between your knees will shrink. Does that make sense? Yeah. Charlotte, James, thank you very much for bringing your amazing knees to the Ouchmobile. Thank, thank you, Dr. Zahn. Job done for today. Clinic closed.